happens in crypto. Crypto is the Johnny come lately new asset class with a whole lot of newbies in it. You're going to see a whole series of these actors get crushed to zero over the next few months. What's up, guys? So today we have with us Mr. Wonderful himself, Kevin O'Leary. He is here to talk about the latest black swan events caused by bankruptcies of huge crypto operator companies like Voyager. He also gives a huge warning that if this happens, millions of crypto investors will be wiped out. If you don't want to see your account going to zero, keep watching because it's pretty concerning. You know, this is nothing new um, in, in the story of leverage. And so in every cycle, what happens is various actors, companies take on more and more aggressive positions using leverage to goose returns, which is age old. It works. It definitely works. Now, what you're going to find in this situation is many crypto operators, particularly lending platforms, have never operated it with such volatility before. So they were in the slow growth from Bitcoin, you know, uh, almost a decade ago from $800 all the way to 60,000. And all along the way, some of them became really aggressive in, in using leverage, which is the traditional hedge fund model. Kevin explains the whole concept of how banks and hedge funds use excessive leverage with billions of dollars of margin in very simple terms. He tells us how they utilize investor money to build leverage positions. And when they go wrong, the entire crypto space experiences a spectacular crash. Um, in, in the contagion of, of leverage being caught offside with the lack of liquidity. Voyager is not that big a deal. It's, it's kind of irrelevant in terms of, you know, this is a diversified shareholder base. Um, it's, it's not FDIC insured in any way, so it's not putting any stress on the, the government systems in any way. Um, all the shareholders should consider themselves uh, educated. No different than when you go to Las Vegas, put it all on black and it's red, you lose. And that's exactly what's happened here. But the great news about this and why this is so good for the market and how this helps the crypto market is it educates the business models that aren't going to work. So it's like taking a big spatula from the sky and scraping all the crap out of the market. And it's gonna happen very, very quickly. So anything that was built on you know, a, a business model that is, is not gonna work or can't sustain volatility, is going to be gone and it's a good thing. It's a wonderful thing. It's going to leave the industry much stronger. Yes, we must mourn the investors that got wiped out to zero, but even they are better off in the sense that they've been educated. He then goes on to say events like these are actually good for the industry because they encourage both investors who lost money and new retail investors to invest in these projects. To be fair, it is a very valid point as crashes like these get a lot of media attention and help bring more awareness to the community. You own crypto without leverage and you understand your counterparty risk. Don't worry, by the time all the litigation is over from all these bankruptcies, you'll know everything about everybody. Lawyers are really good at doing that. And they, there'll be tons of class action, if not just straight on litigation, to, to go after any assets they can get. And that's, that is sort of, you know, when a fish dies in the ocean, it goes to the bottom and that protein is reprocessed by slugs. And I'm not saying lawyers are slugs. They have more than single cell proteins, but they know how to get the last drop of any value there and they're going to get it. It's going to take five to seven years, but all of this is good. So in, in, when I hold crypto and I know it's very volatile, I have zero, zero leverage in any of my positions because I know tomorrow morning I can wake up down 38 percent in any token, any coin, any project. And, and really, that's exactly what's happened. So, you know, it, but if you put on leverage, you learn the very, very important lesson. You go to zero. Kevin explained it as simply and clearly as possible. This is a lesson 90% of traders need to learn or else they will have to learn it the hard way by blowing up their accounts. Leverage is a double-edged sword with equal amounts of risk and reward. He says if new investors don't stop using too much leverage, sooner or later they will incur huge losses, if not completely liquidate their accounts. How are you liking the video so far? We hope you find this information useful and beneficial because it might save you a lot of money and keep you protected. Before you continue further, 
please subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so you never miss another upload. Let, let's talk about that specifically because I think it's a great topic and for several reasons. Reason number one is people think that crypto, the entire sector, is going to get regulated all at once. That's not going to happen. The, the most likely scenario, and this is a personal opinion, but one I've been working on in Washington along with others, is that we would like to get policy on just stable coins first because stable coins represent a very powerful and efficient payment system. And we think we can get bipartisan support between both parties supporting the American dollar as a default currency for a global payment system. It's not going to be the Chinese yuan, it's not going to be the Swiss franc, it's not going to be the euro, it's not going to be the British pound. And the reason it would fall and default to the U.S. dollar would be that that is the currency used to denominate most commodities. And so the challenge you have right now and why there's so much pressure to solve this is it's very inefficient to transfer U.S. dollars over to Geneva, then put it into Swiss francs and then buy Swiss Nestle stock or whatever it is you want to do over there. It's really slow, very inefficient, very costly, not transparent and not easy to audit. And so all of that problem goes away with a stable coin. The U.S. dollar, no doubt, has a lot of inefficiencies. Kevin describes how difficult it is to transfer and use the U.S. dollar globally, not to mention it's very expensive and slow. Kevin proposes that the concept of stable coins solves it all as they will allow for super fast transfers globally. Now, the proposed policy that you'll find in, gr in granular form in both the Haggerty and Toomey bills, and I've met with both of them as, as many others have, this is very simple policy. What it looks as, it says, okay, for any stable coin, any stable coin, an audit every 30 days, and any asset underlying holding up the value of the coin or token cannot have a duration of more than 12 months. Now, you've seen that policy before. It's called a money market fund, and you'll find it at Fidelity and Putnam and many other financial services entities that are FDIC insured. Circle, if it wished, that issues USDC could become a bank. They could be FDIC insured if they wanted to, but they are sort of leading the pack with crypto in terms of payment systems under a stable coin that has not broken a buck. So you can, you've seen even Tether trades below a dollar, it's 0.999 right now. And so when you break a buck, you lose a lot of confidence. So what I'd like to see happen here is that we regulate stable coins first because of their utilitarian value within the crypto universe. And that get done in this calendar year. And the reason that might happen is Toomey is retiring and he is a driving force, as you know, on the hill and is really behind this momentum and this bill and has lots of support from both sides of the aisle. So I think that's good. Now, obviously what happened to Luna is an example of what not to do. So again, a sad situation, billions lost, but a great education to the market. He says that regulations won't be hitting all of a sudden. It will take a few years, but he does agree that the crypto space desperately needs regulation, especially stable coins. Kevin says that whenever a stablecoin breaks a dollar, like USDT, at 99 cents, for example, it's very concerning. With regulations, disasters like Luna can be avoided, and one solution he gives is to audit stablecoin providers every 30 days. Algorithm-based stablecoins, nah, I don't think we're going to do that again. I'd rather see something backed by US dollar or assets that are very liquid that can have duration less than 12 months. So that makes sense to me. So at the end of the day, the bad ideas get you know, removed by the big spatula. And again, it's unfortunate for those investors that didn't think it through, but not all stable coins are alike. It's clear Kevin isn't a big fan of algorithmic stable coins like Luna. Instead, he prefers something that is backed by the US dollar and will make sure it doesn't drop below a dollar. Then he goes on to say that during these current times, one would be better off holding cash in a bank and accumulating 1.2% interest rather than lending out stable coins like USDC. However, overall, he still believes USDC is the best option available as far as stable coins are concerned.
But also the company is constantly monitoring its margin requirements and exactly what it's got and what it's holding. And you const if you have an account with Circle, you're getting a constant stream of information answering exactly those types of questions because they have their brand to protect. They also have that dollar strike value to protect and they have their corporate accounts and count holders to protect and they want to do that they want to emerge from this successful even though it's been tested with volatility and i will remind you that recently it was disclosed that both fidelity and blackrock each invested 200 million dollars in the series f of circle that is a huge vote of confidence in the middle of all of this volatility we're talking about the equity of the company and so they're the most conservative money managers on earth putting a bet forward on Circle becoming at least one of the regulated cryptocurrencies. Kevin points out that proper regulatory control means proper records of all books and proper auditing of the company. He also mentions how BlackRock and Fidelity have invested $200 million into Circle, as it has become one of the first fully regulated crypto projects. I don't believe we've seen the bottom yet, and I, I have a different view of it. I go back again to other asset classes that I've invested in for decades. In every case, you know, traditional bonds, traditional equities, real estate, alternative asset classes, bottoms are reached with an event, a panic event, as I call it. And you can find it in every asset class, um, you know, back in the hedge fund days when they started gating these large multi-billion dollar hedge funds that gated shut down their liquidity caused panic and you saw bottoms in equities as they were being liquidated uh, there's long term uh, was one of the classics in the last couple of decades and it was it was a, a fund that was over levered and blew up we haven't seen that yet in uh, crypto land there's no no big guy has gone to zero yet and i think that's still to come hard to say who it is because it's going to be because of leverage and um, some kind of relationship uh, in a counterparty holding that they have not disclosed. And I'm just speculating right now, but that would be very healthy for the market uh, to have that happen. Voyager's too small, it doesn't matter. The rest of these guys were, were kind of irrelevant in terms of total market cap. Bitcoin and the crypto market itself has almost been cut in half in total market cap. And, and so you would think we're on our way to the bottom, but I like a big, big panic event. That's always been a great way to bottom. It's towel throwing, it's capitulation, it's massive volume, it's total panic in the streets and always a great buying opportunity. Kevin believes we haven't seen the bottom yet as this usually happens when a big player gets liquidated. Even if we consider the fall of Luna, it wasn't as catastrophic as one would think because a few billions pale in comparison to the overall market cap of the crypto space, which is in the trillions. Even though Kevin is speculating when he says he would like to see one of the biggest panic events in crypto history, he does make a very good point. Because that's what typically signals a bottom when it comes to other traditional markets. And it will definitely be a very good thing for this industry. It'll be a great thing because it'll take out all of the bad broken business models, the heavy leverage, the speculation that was too risky, and push everybody. In this Staying true to his beliefs, Kevin says it is essential for some big fish to be flushed out so people can be more careful with leveraged positions and risky speculation. In WonderFi is I need a place to store my crypto assets that fit into my compliance and accounting departments. And so, you know, when, when WonderFi was able to offer me a centralized wallet it, it, at BitBuy, I was able to say to my auditors, look, you can audit this thing daily, weekly, quarterly, monthly, and I can mark to market each position for you at four o'clock, even though it's irrelevant in crypto land, it trades 24 seven. But the old infrastructure of compliance that exists for all financial markets has not yet provided systems yet for anybody that wants to be compliant like I have to be. As we know, Kevin has a sizable investment in WonderFi, he says the reason why he holds so many shares of the company is because it is completely regulated and is 100% transparent about all of its records. All data can be audited on a daily, weekly, monthly, or yearly basis, which is a very solid milestone in the crypto space, as WonderFi is the first crypto company of its kind to offer this. If you find videos like this entertaining and value-packed, 
hit the like button and share this video with your friends so you're not the only person in your circle making gains. Let others share in the wealth too. See you guys in the next video.